Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. How are you? I'm very glad to see you. It's been a while. It has been a while, mate. How have you been? I'm very good. Also, welcome to the parents that are watching at the moment. Um, we got Michael. How are you, Michael? And the kids? Hello. Yeah, um, yeah, for this time, we might not have many people watching um, live, but Understandable. Um, we, Unfortunately. Are, we are recording the session for them, Georgie. Yeah, no problem. Happy for that. That's, that's good. How you been? Uh, good. Um, on parental leave at the moment, so which is perfect during lockdown. So um, <laughs> three kids at home trying to keep them busy. I know. Congratulations. Yeah. You got a big family now. Are they all yeah, soccer yeah. players? Are they going to be all soccer players? Oh, we'll see. We'll let them choose their own adventure, I think. Yeah. But from the beginning, they start kicking the ball. You know, you start... That comes also from the parents. Yeah, of course. Of course. But, you know, we're, we're happy for them to choose their own adventure. We're not going to force them one way or the other. So we'll, we'll see where they end up. We'll see what happens, yes. All right, Jogi, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. It's, it's, it's hard for you. You're very busy. So we're not going to keep it uh, too long, respecting your time. Um, so to give you a little bit of context and what we're doing right now is I'm inviting some people that can bring value to our players and our parents. So, for example, we got people in, um, related with the sport, like um, we got Jake Holman from the A-League from MacArthur Rams. That was a player. Okay. Uh, we got Dimitri Tomaras, that you know him as a coach. We got another technical director as well uh, from uh, Barry's join us. And, and now we have you with the medical part of the sport, which is, oh. is, is, is really interesting and really good. So for, the, for, for us to understand a little bit more what's happening with our bodies when we play football and what's good, what might not be too recommended, so I think I think this is gonna be very very good for us as a as a coaches and players as well. So just to start with, I would like to know a little bit more about you. If you can tell us um, your yeah, journey cool. and a little bit of introduction. Yeah. Okay. So um, first of all, thank you, Sergio. Um, it's always a pleasure to sort of talk and disseminate uh, the knowledge that we sort of gather um, throughout through through our work uh, to the public. So. Um, if at any point anyone has any questions, um, feel free to jump in or if you want to hold it to the end, I'm happy to stay on as long as uh, my, my, um, my kids will allow me to, essentially. Um, so a bit about me. Um, so I'm an exercise physiologist. Uh, you can think of it as a univers university-trained personal trainer. So uh, there's a university degree where we go through and we learn about um, how the body responds to exercise, how it adapts to exercise, and how we can use exercise in the context of sport uh, or in the context of health and disease. Um, and so I focus predominantly on the latter. So I focus on health and disease. Um, I did my PhD in the topic uh, where I looked specifically at um, the effects of uh, weight training or resistance training in adults with diabetes. Um, and I've been, I've been working at the University of Sydney ever since as a lecturer there and with a, with a research program. So uh, most, of my, most of my research program focuses on, on weight training, but it does use all sorts of exercise. We do use aerobic type exercise and other, other forms of exercise as well. Um, but I, I, my, my, most of my focus is on older adults and middle-aged adults. So looking at diseases associated uh, that we commonly see when we get older. Uh, so things like heart disease, things like diabetes, things like um, cognitive decline uh, and the risk of developing dementia. But um, that's not to say that I don't have sort of some background understanding of, of how we can use weight training in, in younger age groups, which is more the topic of today. Um, and so it's, that's where I'm, I'm expecting most of the, the discussion to lead, which is fine. Um, but just, just a bit of a disclaimer, that's not my, my particular focus or area of knowledge. Um, uh, in terms of soccer, uh, you may have gathered from the beginning of this, I, um, I, that's where I've, I've known Sergio from, so I've played I did play, no longer play at this level anymore, but for 10 to 15 years at Stanmore Hawks and one year at, at, at Gladesville as well. So um, I do have a bit of an understanding of, you know, of the game. And so it kind of, I'm allowed to, I'm able to blend my, my two areas of knowledge and, and how we could possibly use, use that across, across both. So 
I can see we've got a range of ages here. We've got some parents and we've got some kids. So I'm going to have to try and, and uh, keep this um, interesting for everyone, which will be a challenge for my end, but I'll see how I go. Um, so that's a, that's a brief background about me. Um, in terms of other areas that I, I do go into, I'm, I'm moving into the space of, of mental illness and mental health, uh, which we know affects all age groups. Uh, and so it's not just specific to, to uh, middle and older age adults, and including things like uh, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. Um, and um, yeah, that's basically where my focus is. That's, that's really impressive, Mav, and, and thank you very much for sharing all these uh, research that you have done, all the knowledge with us. Um, I got, or right, you touch a couple of points that we really want to, 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 to go through. And I will pick the first one that you said that is very important and is the, the weight and all these kind of resistant training mm -hmm. uh, for young adults and for kids. So what I've heard every time when I was little is I, I asked my dad, all right, dad, I want to be a little bit stronger. I want to, you know, maybe go to the gym, maybe leave some stuff. And they always go, no, 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 because if you do that, you're going to stop growing. If you do that, you might, you might, you know, do something your body not beneficial. So what's, your, what's the reality in, in the kind of training that kids can and kids can't do? So okay. give us a little bit of, yeah. Yeah, uh, good question. Um, lot, a lot to our go through. I'll, I'll try and get through, um, keep it simple and, and um, uh, get to the point here. Um, so, yeah, this uh, sort of misunderstanding of, um, of the bad effects or the potential risks of, of resistance training has sort of been around for a while and it's, um, it's, it's sort of difficult to overcome. So there's a bit of a, uh, a stigma there uh, that, that, that persists. Um, I'm not sure how it got there, but it, it, it's definitely true in the context of trying to push children into the field of like bodybuilding, powerlifting at an early age. Um, you know, there's a, there's a great example, unfortunately, a great example of uh, little Hercules, if you go and look him up, where his parents pushed him into the, you know, a competitive bodybuilding sport, you can quite see that that has adversely affected him. But we're talking about the extremes of um, extreme levels of training. And no, none of that is what we ever are recommending um, anyone to really do, uh, unless you are a professional competitive athlete who's you know, built up over time to have that degree of um, exertion or training. So if we're talking about specific, you know, typical programs, uh, the, the reality with the, with the scientific evidence that we have is that injury risk is minimal. Um, you know, it's far less than what you would get from competitive sport. So, you know, we're happy to put our kids into competitive sport and we should because it's, it's, it's overall the, the, the benefits outweigh the risks. The risks of things like strength training are far, you know, far less than that if it's done properly. And that's, that's the key thing. Now, uh, to, when we talk about weight training, we always think about like dumbbells, so lifting weights, pushing heavy machines, doing, you know, heavy squats, or, you know, we, we, we have all these sorts of perceptions about what strength training is. Uh, but just understand it, it, it's more than, 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 than dumbbells and, and weight machines. That's one type of strength training that we can do. Uh, we can do body weight exercises. So things like body weight lunges, body weight squats, body weight push up pull-ups if we're strong enough, uh, or chin-ups. Um, we can do things with elastic bands. We can do things uh, that we call biometric exercise, which are things like hopping um, or things where we uh, sort of contract, uh, shorten our muscle and contract again, uh, which, are, which are movements that we, we typically see in things like soccer. So um, those can all come under the umbrella term of, of strength training. It's not just um, you know, dumbbells and, and, and weight machines. Uh, so when we, when we look at sort of randomized controlled trials or interventions where we, we assign some people to do, uh, some, or, or kids in this, in this context, do some um, strength training work, the, the rate that they, they, they injure themselves directly from that uh, is not very high. And most of the injuries that they find uh, are due to poor technique, uh, poor supervision, so letting, the, the, letting children you know, sort of play around with equipment uh, when they don't understand how to use it, uh, you know, loading them up too quickly uh, would be another way to, to that, that, might, that might cause injury. Um, and, um, you know, uh, poor technique. So, you know, not understanding how to do the movement properly. So where this all leads to is how can we do it safely and effectively? 
Um, and the answer to that would be, well, first of all, focus on technique over strength to begin with. So, you know, if they're, if they're a young child and they're, they're new to it, um, you know, don't focus on strength, focus on the technique. Uh, focus on movement patterns that are, you know, um, more, more physiological or more functional in nature, uh, things that they might typically do, um, things that are easily performed um, but do but do use uh, you know large muscle groups. So good examples of this would be a squat or a lunge. No need to, to put external load on these for a moment, uh, but focus on how they might do it. So you could do it with a broomstick, for example. So how do I do a, a squat holding a broomstick? And then you can start to add on slightly heavier weights as the technique is good. So the thing I would encourage you is if you are going to do these types of exercises, make sure you're doing it with a professional who's trained, particularly in kids, because, uh, you know, they're growing, they're changing, they're adapting, you know, more, you know, to life in, in various stages. So you, you do want someone that's, that's kid centric when they do this. Um, but there's definitely no reason to shy away or, or be fearful of this type of exercise. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm sure there's going to be questions later, so I'll save the answer, but there's, there's, Definite benefits, uh, you know, to it uh, in terms of uh, reducing injury risk in the future with, with things like soccer and other exercises as well. Yeah. So, um, Muff, when we do training, for example, in now in the soccer field, all right, um, with the little ones, we say, all right, the fact that they some some of them are not very coordinated, some of the uh, they they don't know how to move and control their body properly in early ages. Because you know, before maybe you spend more time jumping from a tree or you know yeah. um, you know doing more stuff that now the kids are not exposed to. So we're involved in a little bit more of coordination, a little bit more of jumping, a little bit more of exercise, isolated exercise where they they, they do different stuff and not with the ball. But then we introduce the ball, which is an external element into mm -hmm. that, which is it, it becomes if the kid can run by himself, imagine running, controlling a ball. So I see it kind of in the same way with the weight. So um, if the kid can control his body properly and then we give him, I don't know, four kilos uh, mm -hmm. ball to run with. So I think that's the step that we miss. All right. Start with your body weight then introduce some bands and then if you all that and then you might need a little bit more of muscle a little bit more strength then get something else yeah so i think um what you what you touched on there sergio is is is, is correct um uh, you know the analogy of drawing it towards the ball and you know having a technique so the, the main thing is the technique uh if they can do the movement pattern well then you know you can make a judgment or the, the person that's, that's doing the training can make a judgment about what load might be then appropriate for that individual. So it's always a, it's always, and this is true with adults, I mean, there's no different, uh, it's the same logic. You know, what the individual can do is how you then judge, you know, um, what you give them. So think about their prior experience, what their, what their technique is, how quickly they're learning and adapting. And you might get two kids that start off at the same, same level, but they have very different trajectories as they learn because one, one's picking it up easier or better and, um, you know, so each, each kid will adapt differently and you shouldn't just have a one, you know, one size fits all approach. It really does need to be an individualized thing about uh, to how each kid's ability. So that, that's always a judgment that's going on. So yeah, it's a, it's a very similar example uh, or analogy that you draw there with, with soccer training. The interesting thing you brought up uh, is jumping from trees, uh, swinging around on monkey bars. Um, you know, these are, these are all things that, uh, especially the parents listening, um, probably are familiar with when they were younger. Um, maybe, uh, and I think uh, as a society, at least in, in Western cultures, uh, we typically uh, remove kids from these uh, experiences because we're fearful of injury. Uh, and you know, understandable. I've got I've got four-year-old boys now, so I'm starting to experience this idea of climbing and jumping and exposing themselves to harm. Uh, but you know, there's there's detriment to that because these are all skills and movements. They, they practice landing, they practice climbing, and they, they practice movement patterns. And you know, it's a form of weight training. Think about climbing, form of weight training. So it's building their muscles. So you know, it's a, it's about encouraging safe um, ways of, of doing those sorts of things. You know, don't climb to the top of the biggest tree you can find, uh, but find a a good middle ground. And you know, it, it, it's actually to their benefit. Uh, but yes, it carries that risk of, you know, injury or falling. And, you know, that's why we're all here. 
So, uh, but that's an interesting thing that we brought up there, and it's probably part of um, why we're seeing some kids far behind in terms of some, some motor skill and motor development. Yeah, exactly. That motor skills that you naturally develop when you jump a tree, when you fell, and then I'm not going to do that anymore. I might do differently. And then you yeah. learn a new skill, new, new way to jump, new way to, new, new way to land. Some of the kids don't yeah. know how to land. They hit the head sure. because of they're not used to fail. So little stuff like that, I can see the difference. Um, Muff, just to go into the other part of the training, let's say, all right, that was about weight and maybe if you're going to get stronger, but what if you want to get fitter? If the kids maybe are lacking of a little bit of fitness, they might be overweight a little bit, they might be not eating properly. And then how will you manage that? Will you manage that by isolated training, running, or is that beneficial or maybe that's not the way or just let the kid get healthy habits and then start a process? Okay. Uh, yeah, good question. So, um, I think, you know, it's not news to anyone that exercise is good for you. Uh, we all know that. Um, you don't need me to tell you that much. Um, so if we're going to sort of break this down, the, the government um, and various exercise bodies have guidelines for how much exercise we, we should all be doing. Uh, so when we're looking at kids, they're, they're recommending about 60 minutes a day, every day, of what we call moderate to vigorous um, activity. So this is true for kids, I think, six and up, six to uh, 16 uh, or six to 18. And then they, they merge into the, the adult recommendation beyond that age, uh, which aren't too dissimilar, but it's a little bit lower. So we're talking about um, moderate to vigorous activity. Moderate exercise would be, you know, right now where we're talking. Um, so any, any exercise that disrupts your ability to talk, uh, where you might have to uh, focus on your breathing a bit, and your, 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 your talking is sort of interrupted, that would be where you're around moderate level of exertion. And this is true for children and adults. If you can't carry a conversation, if you can't speak at all, um, because your, your breathing is just too heavy, that's where we're getting into vigorous. So if you think about when you've gone for a, a very fast run, you're very breathless, you wouldn't be able to talk, you know, you gasp from air. that's obviously where you're getting vigorous. So we're, we're looking for people to be doing that type of exercise. Now, uh, it's very, very, you'll be very careful about the messaging here around exercise and the health benefits. So uh, particularly with kids, it should always be focused on healthy behavior, health and healthy habits and fun and enjoyment because that's what gets kids active. So you should never really make the focus about their weight or their health. Okay, those benefits happen as they enjoy the exercise that they're doing. So, you know, if, you're, if your kid, if you want your kid to be active, um, or if they want to be active, find something that, they're, that, they're, that they enjoy doing. So, you know, it might be soccer. That, that, that's great. And that's one form of exercise. Uh, but it doesn't have to only be soccer. And the exercise they do does not have to be um, soccer specific. So, you know, if they want to do anything like cycling, swimming, weight training is one of them, um, some other sport, uh, anything that gets them out, if they're moving and, and enjoying themselves, uh, will keep them active and, and build healthy habits. Um, now, the, this lockdown uh, that we're having in Sydney here, you know, poses some, some challenges to that, uh, obviously, but, you know, uh, we, we try and find the silver lining to everything uh, in, in this, in this, in this um, field that we work in. So yeah. one benefit that we can look, about, look at from a family perspective is the, the recommendation that we're getting from the government is, or well, one of the exceptions that we get is exercise outdoors. Uh, but only within your family. So this gives us an opportunity to actually make family habits uh, that are healthy and, and beneficial. So we can all get out and, and find something that we enjoy doing as a family together. That could be walking, going to a park, playing, whatever it is that you and your family want to do uh, is, is a way that you can build um, sort of healthy behaviors for everyone um, that, you know, benefits not just the kids, but also benefits yourself and the relationship that you have. So, um, you know, let's, while we've got time to do that, I think that's, that's one thing that we can all try and do. Uh, it's pretty much the only thing that we can do outdoors at the moment. So we may as well do it. Um, so that's probably the silver lining to all this. Is it, it allows people to start to build that, that behavior base. So it's more about give the kid a motivation out of, don't mention the problem, mention maybe uh, what he yeah, likes to do or she likes. is important. I mean, if we start telling kids that, uh, you know, they need to exercise to say, um, 
for whatever other reason, um, it's not really a motivator. Okay, it, it, and, it, and it becomes sort of a, a um, you know, we're, we're, we deal with uh, stigma and bullying. You know, we're not, we're not bullying our kids, obviously, but this is what bullies do at school, you know. Um, so it's not about, you know, um, frame, we want to frame it in a positive way. So find something that they enjoy doing, find something that they're interested in that's active, and the health benefits will happen. You know, that's, that's the main thing. So if we want health, if we want health outcomes to occur uh, through exercise, just find something that they will naturally want to do uh, more and more and more. And, you know, they'll wake up and go, dad, mom, can we go out and do this? And they're active and they're, they're doing you know, all the things that they need to be doing. Uh, and you're not really having this discussion about their, you know, any, any health concerns or other concerns that, that uh, might be there and, you know, might be in the back of your mind as to why you want to be active. No, that's, that's, that's really good. And, uh, Muff, it, and, and I want to touch this as well. I've worked with, no work, but we have some um, kids that got some, some, time of, some, some type of um, maybe a mental health um, condition or maybe uh, they have been affected by the lockdown or they yeah. might be, you know, um, diagnosed with, with something from, you know, a mental health issue. Yeah. Um, and then how that you've been doing a lot of research and maybe there are some parents or, or people that are going to watch the video later. Uh, what can you share? How does affect the training, any kind of training into, into these kind of players that, that need a little bit more of, of, of exercise or need to be more active or, or yeah, guide us through that? Because in my point of view, I'm totally ignorant of that. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess what, what's the question exactly? Are we, are we talking about the benefits of exercise for mental illness and mental health? Or, you, got you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, look, most of my, my knowledge comes here from adults. So, I'm going to, um, most of my answer is going to be framed from the perspective of what I know about adults, but um, I'm, I'm assuming most of this is true in, in children as well. Um, but I, I can't say that I'm, I'm too well read on, on that aspect. Um, so what we know from adults at least, and this includes, you know, young adults, so, you know, uh, 20, 18 year olds, um, is, uh, you know, uh, if we think about things like depression and anxiety, those are the most common mental illnesses that we, that we see, uh, you know, mo a lot of men, uh, will experience episodes of depression, women too, obviously, um, just men don't report, uh, when they, when they, when they're having, they're not less likely to, to speak up about their feelings and their emotions. Uh, but, you know, we might see the first episodes occurring in, in young adulthood or even in their teenage years. Um, now, quite often, the, you know, if you, if you go to your doctor, they might see you as a psychologist. They might use some medication like an antidepressant. Uh, these things are, you know, typical antidepressants are things like Zoloft uh, now, which are commonly prescribed. Um, but we know from, from scientific studies that exercise has very, very beneficial effects um, in managing symptoms of depression. So I'm never going to talk about it curing anything. Um, I'm always going to talk about it as managing symptoms. Uh, I'm never going to talk about it replacing medication. Um, you know, sometimes you can get away with not having to, to take medication. The exercise itself is good enough. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's great if that happens. But, you know, I'm never going to talk about it as exercise as being better than, than medication. Uh, sometimes you need a combination of the two. Uh, but what we do see is people who have these symptoms um, generally report a reduction in symptoms um, after they commence a, an exercise program. So, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're noticing symptoms in your child, um, you know, always go and consult your doctor. I'm not saying just go straight to exercise. You know, you need to sort of have these discussions with a medical professional. Uh, but do understand that exercise is a, is a potent way to to help manage these symptoms. Um, and, you know, they can, they can help relieve anxiety or any stress that might be, that might, that these lockdowns might be causing um, yourself or your children. Uh, you know, it's not just children that are affected by this um, or any, or any sort of depression that might come around from isolation. So obviously they're, you know, they're, they're a bit cut off from their friends and their social networks right now. And, and so being able to being out and, and exercising, we know can, can acutely improve these symptoms. So, what I mean by acutely is you, you have these symptoms, you do a 60 minute walk, 30 minute walk, 60 minute walk, 
your symptoms will immediately be better straight after that walk. Right? And those, that, that improvement might last for around 24 hours. So what this means is if you go through this walk every 24 hours, every one or two days, essentially, if you get out of the house and, and go for these bouts of exercise, um, you can have this consistently lower level of, of, of symptoms that you're, that you're experiencing. Now, you might have the same symptoms, but to a lesser degree, or some of these symptoms might, might, might disappear entirely. Um, and, and so we know that exercise is, is, is helpful in, in this way. Um, and, it, you know, I, I think this is why the government has been so, so clear about this as, as this being one of the exemptions, going out to exercise. Because, you know, um, it, it, we, we know from lots and lots of studies about the, the role exercise has in that, in that area. I le I've learned something now that I, I made a mistake and I know a lot of coaches and a lot of parents sometimes do. And is sometimes the kid might have a bad day. Sometimes the kid might have this, you know, have all this lockdown and they had it in 2020 and they get back to the season and we're too focused on maybe on football. And that's one of mm. my mistakes. I've done it. and I'm sure more people have done it. And we go and put more pressure on the kid and now this exercise that they they supposed to get better because they do an exercise itself, we change and maybe do the opposite by putting pressure on the kid by I don't know making having a bad day because he did a mistake in the game or in the training session. So I think football could be you know how you manage it as well. So rather you push the kid and don't let him enjoy. It. So the, the the exercise he did is not working for anything. Or go and enjoy it and, and have a good time. I reckon we need to give it a little bit a different approach now, and that's something I've realized as well. Yeah, uh, look, it, in any age group, enjoyment is key because um, you know there, there's um, there's there's a there's a scientist that I that I follow, uh, Paddy Ekakakis. He's, he's Greek, but he works in in, in the U.S. and he, he talks about the uh, the hedonics of exercise, so the enjoyment factor. Um, and, you know, if we, if we make exercise painful, and that can be physically painful or emotionally painful, you know, by, by placing too much pressure or stress, you know, we think about us as adults, if, the, if, if, if work overloads us um, and puts too much stress on us, you know, a lot of us think I need to change jobs, I need to stop this, we, we go on leave, we take stress leave, you know, we, we as adults do this all the time. We, we, we remove ourselves from situations that we don't enjoy, uh, particularly if we're feeling too much stress and pressure. So there's this, you know, kids aren't as emotionally capable as adults. Uh, so putting too much pressure on them, you know, yes, it, it, can, it can have detrimental sort of, when I say detrimental, you know, if you want them to, if you, if you want them to enjoy sport like soccer or other, you know, exercise, physical types of activity, um, you know, if you put too much stress and pressure on them, you know, uh, you will see a lot of kids giving it up. So there'll, there'll be the one or two kids that persist with it and break through, you know, and become Lionel Messi. Um, and then the rest of them will, you know, 99.9% .9 of them will drop out and, you know, not want to not want to play again. So, you know, it's you know, overall the general message would be make sure there's that they enjoy it. And, you know, take into account kids, uh, you know, we all... As adults, we're labile in our emotions. We we fluctuate. We go up and down. Kids, kids as well. So, you know, adjust accordingly as you as um you know based on how they're presenting that day, and and understand that you know their heart, their lives are, are hard as well for very different reasons. You know, and we have to appreciate that. Uh, you yeah. know, whatever happened, they they had a bad day at school. We have to understand that that can translate to misbehavior as a coach when we're when we're trying to train them. The same way, if you have a bad day at work, you go home and you're grumpy. Um, and you say something, you know, that you shouldn't have said to your, your wife or your partner, your husband, um, you know, and you understand, oh, I shouldn't have said that, sorry, I was grumpy, kids are going to act the same way. So we have to understand that when we're trying to get them to, to follow on instruction uh, on the training field. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. Um, now, we, we've been kind of um, 20 minutes, 30 minutes into the conversation. I would like if there are some parents there that want to, um, ask any question or put it in the comment section. You know, the kids that are listening, we we find to to read them and 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 yeah. Or if you want to save it, just put it in the comments and then uh, or ask Daniela or myself and and you can 
have a word with with Dr. Um, Georgi. Um, Maf, in in terms, I don't know if you've seen or there is any research in this. In long term, what is the benefits of of the of the training of the stay active and 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 have a, a active routine um, in long term? So, for example, myself as a soccer player. I took it for a period of time, very, very serious, where I play in Colombia and everything. And I, I, I reached levels of exercise where I, I felt that I went over my over the top. And then when I reduce it and I, I try to push without preparing myself, I start feeling pains and all this lay down in the G. But then I've seen adults that have had a, a good life, just, you know, training, but not going over the top, not going to the top level, not going to the bottom, just in the middle. In long term, these guys look like, like 30 when they 80. So what's the difference in between going over the top and just being manage this balance? Okay. Um, all right. So there's, there's about four or five different questions in there, Sergio. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's start with number one. Pick, you pick whatever you uh, like. The, the long-term benefits of exercise. Um, so, yeah. So why we talk about building a healthy habit and healthy behavior is because if we persist with something like, like physical exercise, we know that it, it translates to health benefits down the track. So there's study after study after study um, that, that show this. So, you know, we can delay the, we can, you know, um, reduce the risk of developing a condition. Uh, and that could be a physical condition uh, like diabetes or heart disease. Uh, that could be a mental condition like depression. Uh, that could be a, 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 a musculoskeletal condition like arthritis um, or osteoporosis. We know that there's, there's these protective benefits of exercise for all of those things. Um, if we're talking about school children, um, uh, you know, and, and this is true for adults too, um, exercise can actually help with our, with our brains. So it can actually help us with our attention. Um, so we, we find that if you, it's a very consistent finding, if you give someone a, a bout of exercise, so a 30 minute um, walk or, or a weight training session, uh, your attention and focus will actually be better uh, for a few hours after that exercise. Um, and again, if you do this consistently, um, we, um, you know, you could have those periods of better focus. So, you know, if we're, if we're trying to have our kids, you know, we're homeschooling them at the moment, uh, for those of you that have school aged children, um, you know, if they're, if they're struggling, um, and they have a break in their, in their class, doing something physically active with them might actually improve their, their attention and focus in the classes they have coming next. So don't discourage them from wanting to get out and be active encourage them to do that because it might actually help their learning later on. Um, and it actually can also improve your brain function. Uh, and we've seen this in, in, in studies that I've done specifically now uh, in older adults who have, you know, cognitive impairment. So they don't actually have dementia yet, but they are, they do, they do score low on some cognitive tests. Um, and so they might be at risk of developing dementia. And we, we gave them a training program of, of, of heavy weights um, that we built them up to. Um, and we actually saw that their, their brain function improved. And we did some MRI scans on their brain and we saw that parts of their brain actually got bigger. And those, those parts of the brain are related to their, their brain function. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is, you know, it, it, it has benefits from your metabolic health, your brain health, your, your, your bone health, all sorts of things if we persist with it, okay? Um, now, your next question was about overtraining. Uh, you know, and this fine balance. So, you know, if we're, if we, overtraining is really only a problem for people who are pushing it. So, you know, if we're talking about kids who are going to soccer training two or three times a week, playing a game on the weekend, we're probably not dealing with the overtraining issue here. Uh, kids who are training every day, uh, playing, maybe having, maybe, you know, some kids play school soccer and then they play uh, with their club the next day. You know, they have training two days a week, uh, sorry, twice a day, every day. Uh, you know, these kids definitely at risk of overtraining. Um, and, you know, adults too. So, you know, we see, we see adults who run many, many kilometers, you know, a week um, uh, might be at risk of these things. And, uh, you know, typically it's highly motivated children, uh, but also motivated children who then have sort of that motivation sort of fed into uh, either by coaches or parents. 
um, and, you know, and there's no sort of um, discussion about what's appropriate. Um, you know, so the, the goal obviously is to improve them in whatever sport they're doing. Um, but, you know, the, the consequence of overtraining can, can mean like serious injury that sets you back months. So, you know, common things that you see are things like stress fractures in, the, in, in your leg. So these are overuse injuries. Um, and, you know, that could put you out of action for six to nine months. Uh, you can see things like ligament ruptures because um, your tissues need to repair. If they don't repair, they actually weaken. So uh, we see things like ACL uh, ruptures and they, you know, if you want to get back to competitive sport, you need to have surgery. Again, you're looking at nine to 12 months recovery. Uh, so, you know, not overtraining is, is really important. Uh, for anyone who has daughters, um, overtraining can disrupt the menstrual cycle. Uh, so if, you, if your daughter's, you know, um, in that age group uh, where they're having their period and they're overtraining, uh, one of the signs for, for, their, for, for females is their period actually disappears. Uh, and that means that their hormonal systems, like things like estrogen, uh, which help form bone, uh, are not at appropriate levels. And so this actually puts them at risk of poor bone health when they're, when they're adults. Um, so that's one sign in, in, in girls. Um, uh, it's a little bit harder to, to see in boys. Uh, what you might see if, if, if kids are overtraining, uh, you know, they have disruption in performance, so their performance metrics go down. Um, you also might see, you know, mood or behavior changes, which can be difficult to separate from normal teenage behaviors. Just thinking back to my old teenage years. Um, you might see, they might report, you know, lots of pain in their muscles and their, and their, and their, their knees or their joints that just don't go away. You know, they, they persist, they're chronic, they're not. They don't, they don't, they're not there for 24 hours. They're there for, for, for weeks. Um, those might be typical things that you might see. Uh, you know, they're running slower. They're moving slower. They have a, they, they don't really want to go out and exercise anymore. And you're the one that's pushing them to do it. That's a, that's a big sign. So the key is how do we avoid it? Um, now, there's two, there's two types of overuse or overtraining injuries. There's the one where you just do too much exercise in general. So for that, it's simple. Um, make sure that we just don't overdo it. And, you know, you grade, you graduate people into these things. So, you know, it's not to say that we can never exercise seven days a week. Uh, it's not to say that we can't run a marathon. Of course we can run marathons. People run marathons all the time. But I can't go out tomorrow and run a marathon. I have to start with an appropriate level and build myself up to a load that my body can manage. Uh, so it's, it's about gradually building up load you know, so when I say load, uh, it could be how many minutes you're doing, the intensities you're doing it, or the, the complexity or the difficulty of the task that you're doing. So you might make things a little bit harder by running faster, jumping higher, adding a ball in, um, you know, adding more complex movements like turning um, or, you know, difficult skills that, that you know, relate to soccer. Uh, and building up slowly so that it's, it's never a massive jump. The other thing that we see in kids is, um, you know, particularly kids who might be talented in, a, in one particular sport, is that's the only sport that they play. Uh, and this can actually be a problem uh, because we get to developing, they're growing. Uh, and if we focus on one type of sport, we start to create imbalances. Uh, they, only learn, they, they only build certain muscle groups. They only learn one set of skill, uh, motor skills. You know, this is a time when they're learning lots and lots of new things uh, in terms of uh, motor skills. Uh, and so it's actually uh, ill-advised to just focus on one type of sport and you should encourage them to take up many different types of activities. They don't have to be competitive sports, but just do a range of different, different things because um, we, we, you're less likely to suffer from sort of either overuse injuries of a particular joint uh, or muscle imbalances that doing only one type of exercise can occur. So a simple analogy for this is if you're doing, a, if you're doing weights and you're doing a, just a bicep curl in one arm, that arm will get really strong, but you'd have a very <laughs> be the asymmetrical, you know, so you, you train both sides. Um, and then, you know, if you just did your biceps, well, then your triceps would be, you know, small by comparison. So now you have to add in, you know, a tricep exercise. And if you don't do your legs, then you've got this big upper body and very skinny legs. So now you've got to do your legs. So the idea is a variety of exercises will lead to a well-rounded sort of condition. Uh, and so that should be encouraged. 
Um, I think there was another point I was going to make here, but I forgot. What no, you, you, you <laughs> touch all, all the questions I made. No, that, and that's very uh, important that you mentioned that all these sort of exercise. So I'm actually thinking for our programs to include sessions completely out of football. So I'm, 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 I want to encourage a little bit of, yeah, football, football, football. But sometimes football is, I, I've known kids that are so focused on football that whenever something goes bad in football, that goes bad, the rest of the day is destroyed, the rest of the week is destroyed. So they don't have a escape or a door to open and go and clear their mind, which, yeah, yeah which leads also again to the mental health issues. So too much pressure, too much, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think, you know, as, as you're on the soccer coach, it's fine if your focus is soccer. But the, the idea is that kids in general shouldn't just be focused on one particular sport or exercise, you know. Um, yeah, and, you know, the, a lot of, the, the, a lot of the, the rationale for this is because, you know, if, if, I, if I focus on other sports that are completely unrelated, so if I go to cricket, for example, uh, in the off-season, because cricket's a summer sport, rather than playing like indoor soccer or, an out, or a summer soccer comp, you know, I'm going to waste time in my soccer development, but you know, that that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, we're probably all aware of Ash Barty winning Wimbledon. If you look back at her career, she gave it up for three years or two years and played cricket for a while. Uh, you know, both racket sports, but the, the point being is taking a break did not disrupt her development at all. And you know, she's now world number one, just won Wimbledon. So, you know, there's there's no there's no reason to to prevent or discourage kids from, from taking up a variety of exercises, you know, and, and think about, you know, beyond their playing years, of, you know, in their, in their twenties, uh, you want them to be active in their thirties, forties, fifties, and sixties. And, you know, taking up a variety of, of exercises will help, you know, with, with things that they can do when they're older, uh, when, you know, competitive soccer is no longer, you know, as easy for them to, to do as I'm experiencing now in my thirties. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Uh, Mav, it's been it's been so good. I don't know if um, any parent or we got any questions. Yeah, any just from the parents or the kids, that would be great. Yeah. If anyone want to make a question to doctor. Hi, Mav. Or... How are you? It is Daniela here. Nice to Hi, see Daniela. you. Again. Yeah, how are you? Good, good. Um, Mav, uh, I've seen that your research is based on ADHD. And I would like you to explain a bit more about that and how exercise actually relates with that. Yeah, condition. so um, ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, um, is, is, is a condition that we commonly actually um, think about as being just a, a condition in, um, in children and adolescents. Um, so just to clarify here, most of my, my work that I'm doing with a PhD student right now is in adults uh, who... who Got it in childhood, perhaps, or maybe just been newly diagnosed, but it, it does persist in quite a few adults. Um, so, um, I, I, you know, the, the knowledge that we have in adults is actually non-existent because all the research has been done in kids. Um, so, what we do know in children um, is, you know, if you have a child, uh, if one of the one of your children maybe has ADHD is on the spectrum of, of ADHD, um, or you might have. Um, uh, other family members or, or friends who have children um, with ADHD. Um, we know that exercise can, in, can help with the sort of the behaviors um, that, that are typically present in, in children with ADHD. So um, things like well, the attention deficit, um, as, as the name suggests, so it can improve their attention. Uh, they also, if you, if you, if you, if you know anyone with it, uh, can be quite intrusive. So they, they, they don't have, they, they lack some social norms. So they might um, disrupt conversations. Uh, coming to you, coming, you know, I, my, uh, my students will typically come into my office uh, without any understanding of, of what I, you know, of, of, the, of them interrupting me. So they're intrusive in, you know, that I'm, so um, we know that exercise can actually help manage those things uh, and, and improve those behaviors. Um, again, I'm not gonna say it's gonna replace any medications that. They might need to take but it's definitely it definitely can help and that's been very consistent in all the studies that have been done in children um, we know that they're, they're more likely to develop chronic disease as an adult so if you take a someone with adhd um, and and they progress into adulthood compared to someone who doesn't have adhd they're more likely to develop things like heart disease 
um, and, and, and obesity. So again, these behaviors uh, can help them have help more you know, healthier lives into adulthood, definitely. Um, and if you think about those early adult years when they're, um, you know, well, in their high school years, it's, you know, their education and HSC. In their adult years, it's tertiary education, employment, relationships. Uh, these are all important things that can be, can be affected. So again, if we can manage it with exercise, um, these, are, these are things that can improve uh, sort of their lives, um, you know, living with the, in the lived experience they have with ADHD, definitely. Um, so these are the things that I'm currently working on with a, with a student of mine. Um, and, you know, give me four or five years, I'll have, have an update for you. <laughs> Science is slow. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> sure uh, any other questions from the parents? Can be anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, what I talked about now. The, I'm happy to, to take questions from left field. If I can answer it, I will. If I can't, I'll be honest and say I don't know. Um, so feel free to, 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 any questions around exercise? Happy to see what I can answer. We are, we are live on, on YouTube. I don't know if, if there is any question on YouTube. That goes like one minute before it. So, but okay. yeah. But we'll also, if, if we got a parent or a kid that got any question for a doctor, Georgie, please do it now. It's, it's time. Michael, any question there? I, I can see your face there. Yeah, just you mentioned you were talking about um, exercises and using like the weight of the child or the person rather than resistance, like not weights. Yep. Um, are there any, um, what are the exercises you'd recommend? Um, you mentioned um, lunges there and um, squats. Is there anything else? Uh, again, it's all, it's all depending on the capabilities of, you know, the individual, but, you know, typical body weight exercises you would, you would consider are things like lunges, squats, push-ups, um, you know, uh, pull-ups, like, so, you know, monkey bars, doing chin-ups and stuff. Obviously, not everyone can do those, and, you know, it's, it's about uh, building them up. Um, again, I would, I would, you know, think about discussing this with, with someone who's more trained in kids definitely than I am because there's probably a, a whole range of other things that they can do um, or that are, that are recommended in children. Um, but those would be, you know, very basic exercises that uh, we can do. Now, if you think about push-ups, it's probably an easiest, the easiest example. You can find ways to make them harder and easier that don't involve adding um, extra external weight and you know, just um, modifying the exercise still with the body weight. So uh, the easy example is doing push-ups on your toes versus doing push-ups on your knees. So that's one way to make it easier and more accessible to someone who might not be able to do a full push-up yet. Uh, you know, if that can't happen, if, if doing it on your knees is difficult, um, you know, it's still, still hard for them. Um, you can do it uh, on, you know, on a stable surface that's above the ground. So what I mean is um, you might go to your, might go to a table and put your hands on the table uh, with your feet on the ground and do a push up from there or do a push up against a wall. Uh, and you're just practicing the technique, um, but the, the, the load or the, the amount of weight that they're pushing uh, is very much reduced. So you're, you're taking away it being too hard and you're focusing on just the technique. So we think about squats, how far down you go, the, the, the harder the exercise. So you don't have to go down as far if you find that you know, the person that, or your child or the person that you're, you're working with um, is, is finding the movement difficult. And this is a way that you can introduce them to these sorts of exercises and, and make it easier and accessible. And then as they get better, you can make it harder. Does that make sense? Yes, I was on mute, sorry, yes. Yeah, cool. Now, chin-ups are, are a hard one because it's, it's very hard to make them easier. You'd have to actually probably physically like hold them and, and reduce the, uh, you know, and if you, if, you, if you sort of um, take some of their weight in your arms, then that, they, they would be lighter. So the, you know, they're lifting a lower amount of weight. Um, but, you know, so chin-ups are a hard one to really to make easier, but push-ups and, and squats and lunges, very easy, just, just um, you know, reduce the range of a squat and a lunge and change the angle or that they work on on a push-up and those are simple ways to, to make it easier. Well, I think the, the key I took um, is like the technique, start very slowly with the technique and then ease the weight in 
and don't over overburden them with weight. Would that be correct? Yeah, I mean, you know, for for a child that's developing, we're not we don't really need to talk about you know them getting to to weightlifting level standards. You know, we're not we're not expecting them to do um, you know Olympic lifts or anything that you know any, any crazy things you might see you know their experienced trainers do in the gym. So exactly right. Introduce them to the movement. Introduce them to the exercise, um, and that you know, and that could just be the technique at first. Um, if you find that they their, their technique is good, or the, the person that's training them, you know, identifies that their technique is good, you can start to think about adding load. Uh, there's no reason why you can't. Um, there will be um, benefits beyond just the technique. Then you know, now you start to get some of the benefits associated with with that, with that type of exercise, the adaptations that you expect. Um, so improvements in strength, improvements in the amount of muscle that they that they are putting down. Uh, if we're talking things like jumping. Biometrics, it's actually very good for bone. Uh, and so in these years, children are laying down lots and lots of bone. And the more jumping that they do, uh, the more bone they, they lay down. And this protects them later on in life, you know, when you get to seven years old and you start to worry about osteoporosis. So this is particularly important for girls. So netball is great for them for that. because There's lots of jumping and, um, and bone loading uh, stimulus for them. Um, so... You know, getting them to do these types of things, um, A, gets them familiar with the exercise and translates to, you know, many, many health benefits later on. Definitely. Okay, thank you. That's that's all from me. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muff, touching on that point, um, the impact, I mean, how high is recommended? Because, for example, I've seen exercise where they go uh, almost one meter high I'm from there doing a jump from early ages, like 9, 10, 11. Is that still beneficial or the impact against the ground might be a little bit too much? Uh, I'm going to give you the same answer, Sergio. Um, how, good is, how, how good can the kid jump and land? So, you know, if, you, if they've never jumped off a surface before, don't start with a one meter jump. Start with a, you know, a very small one. Um, you know, so the, the kids you might see doing these videos uh, might be, you know, kids that have been, that have learned this over a long period of time. Uh, so I don't want to comment specifically on, on it because I, I, you know, I, I don't, it's not really my area of knowledge, but what I would suggest is just think about, um, you know, the ability of the kid, uh, the ability of the individual, um, and, you know, what would be, then therefore be appropriate for that, for that individual or that child to do. Um, if you think about soccer, you know, there's jumping and landing all the time. Uh, if you think about other sports, there's jumping and landing all the time. So there might be other sports that they play, basketball, netball for girls. Um, bigger sport, there's, there's often jumping involved. So, you know, and uh, landing is a big part of that as well. So when you, when you land, you can actually, hello, <laughs> you joined us. Uh, when you land, that's when some injuries can occur. You might hurt your knee, you might hurt your ankle. So um, practicing the landing, is, is a good thing. So, you know, there's benefit to that because landing is a, is a skill, um, but build up to what they can and can't do. Um, don't start with those very, very extreme ones. Start with lower ones and, and coach them into the proper landing techniques because um, this could actually benefit them long-term from preventing injuries that are associated with landing. So poor landing technique can, can hurt ankles, can hurt knees, can hurt hips, can hurt backs. So, um, yeah, grade it accordingly is the, is the answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mav. That, that's, that's an amazing point. And if anyone got any more questions, um, we can ask it now. If not, I think we need to respect your time now, Mav, and, and the kids. You know, you need to well, rest at 5 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., they might wake up. <laughs> They're asleep for now, which is good, but yeah, give them an hour and they might wake up. But, yeah, you know, that's it. So you need to happy, to happy to hang around until, until that happens. So, any other questions? If anyone got any question, please let us know. Let I think, um, Sergio, you put my email on the on the uh, advert. So, um, feel free to email me. Um, I might be slow getting back to you, but I'll try to get back to you. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to, um, you know, 
engaging with communities is always is always great because that's really what we try to that's that's the ultimate goal of what we do is try to improve you know people in the community um, be it through teaching my students or you know disseminating science through, through publications ultimately we're trying to get to the community so talking directly to you guys is actually uh, an enjoyable thing for me so I'm happy to to if there's questions that pop up over email to 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 do my best to answer them. Uh, or at least direct you to places where you can probably find, you know, information about it, for sure. Now, thank you very much. And it's always great to have you and have people that bring so much value uh, uh, to, to, to parents, coaches, uh, kids as well, everyone around. Uh, we, we need people like you, like experts that can teach what we're doing wrong and how can we fix it? Or if we're doing maybe, you know, something that we shouldn't, all right, change it. And if not, yeah. keep doing what we're doing. So, no, thank you very much for encouraging kids and people to stay active and have better lives. My pleasure. So just before we, we cut it, uh, do any of the kids actually want to ask a question? Because, you know, there's, there's a few on there now. I want to make sure the kids have had their, their turn to ask a question. You want a question, boys? I'm good. I think you, you can always, you know, you can type it in the chat to Sergio and that way, you know, it's anonymous. Thank you. Saying thank you for the. Thank you. you got any questions? You're welcome. No, no questions, just thanks. That was great. <laughs> Very informative. No You're welcome. Yeah. Say, Faristo. Faristo. Hello. There you go. Thank you. It was really good. It was good to talk about the mental health of it all as well. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a big focus of mine at the moment. So I'm glad we sort of got to touch on it. Yeah, um, I'm glad too. That was good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I got All a right. question. Yeah, Aaron, question yes. Uh, what type of exercises do you recommend for like, uh, for like the age for like my age? Like I'm turning twelve this year. Like, what mm -hmm. type of exercise would you recommend to like build up my body and like, uh, just become stronger and like more uh, healthier? Yeah, good question, Darren. So, uh, type of exercise I recommend. Um, so one thing I was. You know, trying to say is whatever you enjoy doing. So uh, there's no there's no one best exercise. You know, so no exercise is better than the other. Um, sometimes, depending on what you want to, you, if you want to get stronger, though, for example, you know, we know that strength training is is better. Um, if you want to get, you know, if you want to run faster, you know, you, you probably need to do some running exercise. So if you have a specific goal in mind, um, definitely, but you know, what's better for your body overall, they're, they're all the same. They just have slightly different benefits. Um, so pick something that you, that you enjoy uh, and try lots of things because you might not know what you enjoy until you try it. You might not find out what you're good at until you try it. Uh, and if you, you know, if you, if you like it, keep doing it and it'll be good for your body. Yeah, and, you know, and the most important thing is you enjoy it. So it'll be, it'll be good for your brain and you'll be happy. Um, and that, that's always the main, the main thing. here. Uh, if you want to get stronger, though, um, I think like I, like I was suggesting to um, Michael's answer and, and, and Sergio's questions, um, you know, do things. Uh, you, you need to talk to someone who, who uh, see if your parents can, can, can help find someone who, who does these sorts of training with, with children. Uh, but body weight exercises is where you would start. So um, I would I would find someone to help you um, to make sure that you're doing it safely because that's that's the main that's the most important thing. Um, and then you can learn to do things like push-ups, learn to do things like squats and lunges, which will help make your um, your your arms stronger, your legs stronger. Um, and then if you enjoy doing that, then you might you know in in a few years time when you're 15, 16, going on to 18, you can start going to the gym. Um, and, you know, you continue getting stronger, you know, through those types of exercises. So um, it, it, it's hard to say what's the best exercise. They're all good. Find something that you like, that you find fun. You try a variety of things. Thank you. It's a good question. Very good question. Hard to answer, though. They almost got you there. <laughs> That's it. That's all right. the question you always get. What's the best exercise? Uh, I'm, I'm always there. There was another question there. What was it, Danny? It was, what's your favorite pizza topic? <laughs> what's my favorite pizza? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it varies. Um, so pepperoni is always great. 
Um, it's, you know, anything, anything that's spicy, lots of spice. Um, unfortunately, my partner, she's, uh, she doesn't eat meat. So most of my pizzas these days are vegetarian, which is unfortunate. Uh, every now and then I sneak something in that's, that's you know. No that's more souvlaki for you, Matt. Yeah, again, every now and then I sneak one in, but unfortunately, uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of, uh, lot of, lot of vegetarian food, fish and, and chicken. That's all we have in our household these days. Oh, pepperoni, though, is the answer. <laughs> pepperoni. Uh, That's good. I think Sergio always have a game, a super nice game with 10 or 15 questions. So that would be nice if you could answer some of them. Sergio, yes, but you just play. Math, quickly to finish, last 10, 15 seconds, I got a couple of questions for you. In my mind, because as you see, I'm not in the office uh, at home. Um, so very quickly, all right? So we started yeah. from now. Quick answers. Quick question, quick answers. Oh, okay. You, all right, let me pay attention. Go. It will, be, it will be football questions, of course. Is this trivia? Kind of, yeah. No, okay. no, 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 no. Just personal questions about football. What do you believe? Okay. Uh, what's your favorite player? Uh, Thierry Henry. Favorite coach? Arsene Wenger. I'm an Arsenal fan, so go on, Arsene Wenger, yeah. Okay. Um, who will you go to a World Cup final with? Ooh. Ooh. Five, four, three, two, one. I'll be on my own. I don't know if I want to go with anyone. Go on. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. What's the best A-League -League team? Oh, I don't follow the A-League, but let's go West to Sydney Wanderers. Wanderers. MPL team. Yay. MPL team. MPL team? Any MPL. Uh, well, I've, I've, <laughs> I played for Stanmore and Gladesville, so let's just go both of those are equal. Okay, good. Um, if you had a superpower, what would that be? Superpower? Five. Four, three, two, one. Probably being super strong, I think, would be great. That'd be very helpful. Hulk. Yeah, being the Hulk. <laughs> and that was it for my end, Mav. I really, really appreciate your time. You've been great and so helpful. Um, thank you very much to everyone who joined us today as well. Yeah. I hope you, you enjoy and learn. It's so, so great to have you and have all of you uh, involved in this. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. And I, yeah, I hope everyone found it Thank informative. You. And again, reach out to me if there are any questions that you might have. I'll, I'll try and get back to you. Thank you very much, Marv. And thank you very much to the families and players that watch and that are going to watch later. Uh, stay active, motivated, just having having some fun, especially the kids, uh, but also the families and adults. All right, we, we all need to go through together through all this. And the best way is to try to create environments where we feel happy. That's right. Enjoy. I think that's the, the best message Georgie can give it to us. Enjoy whatever you do. Enjoy. Even if it's soccer or the different kind of sport, have fun with it, especially when you're a kid. And if you're an adult, Keep going. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, right. everyone. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. See you, Dennis. Thank you. See you. Let me do some pieces. Are we ready? Yeah. Bye, boys. Thank you, Math.